Frigidaire. We introduce the first home freezer. The first pulsator agitator washer. And now we introduce the Frigidaire Orbit Clean Dishwasher, designed with a unique wash arm that gives you four times more water coverage for a consistently better clean. Frigidaire, over 90 years of legendary innovation. See the full line of Frigidaire appliances at Ventura TV Electronics and Appliances. Hi, I'm John Malos. Welcome to this edition of Connect With Me on the showroom floor at Ventura TV on this day. We're going to be here for the full 60 minutes. We'll be talking about the passing of one Robin Williams. And we'll have the owner of the Fresno Grizzlies in the house talking about that and many other things up until 11 o'clock. And you can call in and weigh in with your thoughts on Robin Williams, 436-ME-TV, option 11. Call in, weigh in, turn down the sound. And it's a world of sports day here on Connect With Me on the showroom floor at Ventura TV, of course, in the city of Fresno. And you're watching us on Comcast Channel 187 and uh, 43.6. And uh, today we're mourning, of course, the passing of one Robin Williams, only 63 years old. I guess uh, the uh, Marin County uh, Sheriff's Department or the coroner is uh, ruling this a suicide at this point. We really don't know too much more than we did yesterday at, at you know, about the same time or late in the afternoon yesterday is when we heard about uh, his passing. But uh, he passed away in Marin County and Tiburon is the place where he had his house, his home. He was very visible in the area of San Francisco. That's where he grew up, went to high school. In fact, he went to high school with a friend of mine, Bruce McGowan, who works at KGO Radio and had a chance to speak to him on Facebook a little bit last night about his friendship with Robin Williams uh, through high school. Didn't know him that well, but a little bit, and he kind of hung out with him to, to a certain extent, but he was a big, big San Francisco Giants slash baseball fan. In fact, in 2010, during the playoffs, he really revved up the crowd at AT&T Park, but he was a well-known comedian worldwide. He hit the big screen, known in movies. He started, of course, in 1978 with a television show called Mork and Mindy, but I think he really gained fame on, or gained fame in the, on the big screen when he hit it big during the movie Good Morning Vietnam. How could we forget this? Good morning, Vietnam! Hey, this is not a test. This is rock and roll. Time to rock it from the Delta to the DMZ. Is that me or does that sound like an Elvis Presley movie? Viva Da Nang. Oh, Viva Da Nang. Da Nang me, Da Nang me. Why don't they get a rope and hang me? Hey, is this a little too early for being that loud? Hey, too late. It's 0600. What's the O stand for? Oh, my God, it's early. Speaking of early, how about that Cro-Magnon, Marty Drywitz? Thank you, Marty, for silky smooth sound. Make me sound like Peggy Lee. AFBN, rocking you from the Delta to the DMD. AFBN, better than AFVD, which means you have to get a quick shot. We're moving on right now. Here's a little riddle for you. What's the difference between the Army and the Cub Scouts? Uh -huh. Cub Scouts don't have heavy artillery. Talk out the field today. Hi, what's your name? Hey, Bob Fibber! Bob, what do you do? I'm in artillery! Thank you, Bob. Can we play anything for you? Anything! Just play it loud, okay? And who gave anyone permission to program modern music? Freddy and the Dreamers! The wrong speed. We've got it on the wrong speed. For those of you who are recovering from a hangover, that's going to sound just right. Let's pull it right back down. Let's try a little faster. See if that picks it up a little bit. Let's get up on 7, 18. Those pilots are going right now. I really like the music. I really like the music. I really like the music. Oh, still a bad song. Hey, wait a minute. Let's try something. Let's play this backwards and see if it gets any better. Woof, this new vip. Freddy is a devil. Woof, this new vip. Freddy is a devil. Picture a man going on a journey beyond sight and sound. 
He's left Crete. He's entered the demilitarized zone. <laughs> All right. Hey, what is this demilitarized zone? What do they mean, police action? Sounds like a couple of cops in Brooklyn going. No, she looks pretty to me. Hey, whatever it is, I like it because it gets you on your toes better than a strong cup of cappuccino. What is a demilitarized zone? Sounds like something out of The Wizard of Oz. Oh, no, don't go in there. You know, even if you're depressed and uh, in a bad mood, you know, watching that over and over again does not get old. It'll put you in a good mood. You know, as I mentioned, uh, Robin Williams, a huge baseball fan, a big San Francisco Giants fan, and here to talk about this, and he will talk about it, live in our studio is Chris Cummings. He is the owner of the Fresno Grizzlies, and he's a Giants fan as well. And we're going to talk to uh, Robin Williams a little bit today, talk about the Grizzlies and what their plight is financially and what their affiliation with the Giants, where we stand with that, and your phone calls. Hey, call in and talk about your feelings about the passing of Robin Williams and what your feelings are about the Fresno Grizzlies, because today is kind of a mixed day, kind of a mixed bag here on Connect With Me, 436, Me TV, Option 11. I want to hear that. I, I want to play that Vietnam, Good Morning Vietnam clip again later in the program. We'll get to it. It's so funny. I can never get enough of it. Back with our program in just a moment. When you're looking for Whirlpool innovation and quality, who has the answers, the selection, the price? Ventura TV Appliance. With billions in nationwide appliance buying power, more than Home Depot and Best Buy combined, we'll help you save. Our low prices on Energy Star qualified Whirlpool appliances save you energy and money and pay no interest on select models when paid in full within 12 months. Ventura TV Appliance, serving you since 1951. No bigger Giants fan than Robin Williams, or maybe me, I don't know, but Robin uh, just had his way with uh, rubbing up the crowd at AT&T at some point. And, uh, you know, Chris Cummings is here. Good, 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 uh, good morning, I should say, Chris. And, you know, one of the funniest lines I heard Robin Williams say uh, was about Candlestick Park. <laughs> He said, <laughs> he said at some point the Giants, uh, they were still at Candlestick at the time, they should have handgun night at Candlestick. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> but he's the only one who could say that and make it sound funny and get away with it. <laughs> exactly. Handgun night at Candlestick Park. And, uh, you know, I mean, I'm very sad and very upset that, you know, the passing of Robin Williams. But when you look at some of those clips and what he's done over the course of the last 30-plus years, you really can't help but laugh. I, I know, and it's, it's, it's very <laughs> sad. I couldn't believe it when I heard it yesterday, and it, it, it really depressed me. Yeah. But again, when you listen to some of the clips, and I, I remember him <laughs> from back in his Mork and Mindy days, and yeah. he was, he's always been absolutely a unique character. And uh, I'm I'm very sad that he's not going to be with us any longer. I know. I, I mean, could you could you imagine any bigger San Francisco Giants fan than him? He grew up in Marin County, of mm -hmm. course, Tiburon, yeah. uh, across the the bay there from uh, well, San I, Francisco. I, I, I think I would say that I'm probably a bigger San Francisco <laughs> Giants fan than he is, or at least at least I'm going to claim Close. a tie. A tie. Close. Yeah. So. Yeah. But uh, you know, he 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 meant so much to the city of San Francisco. He did. Um, as I said before, he was visible in in the city. He wasn't a recluse. He was out living his life, right? Yeah, but most of most of my friends who live in San Francisco have memories of seeing him. Uh, a lot of times, he would bike along the uh, the ocean, yeah. and a lot of people would see him out on his bike, uh, just having a good time. And he was also seen in a number of bars, uh, right? Uh, so he he was very visible. Yeah, and I heard a couple of stories uh, this morning and was reading a few online where uh, uh, a couple, uh, I know, recently married or engaged or something, they were walking along the pier there uh, in San Francisco, and Robin Williams just walked up to him and said, congratulations, it's a heterosexual couple in San Francisco, congratulations. <laughs> that, that sounds exactly <laughs> like Robin Williams. Yeah. How did it affect you when you heard it? I know you said you were sad and depressed, but a little bit about it, but uh, what 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 did it what did you think about the most when you heard it well i i i grew up with him and i'm yeah. i'm he's just a little bit older than i am so you know i remember i remember that scene from good morning vietnam so clearly i remember everything he did was just a class act so you hear about somebody like that suffering from depression to the point where they take their own life or at least we believe that's right now 
and it, it just it just it's such a shock it just doesn't seem like he doesn't seem like the type of person who would have suffered from that kind of depression but clearly depression is uh, it's a it's a real situation and if it's not controlled uh, it causes very very bad problems well, and I heard uh, also this morning uh, people talking, uh, I including on the internet, that you know people saying, "I've never been addicted to drugs or alcohol." He apparently battled uh, drugs and alcohol for a number of years, probably three decades or more, wow. and he was in and out of rehab. In fact, he went to rehab recently. Someone called in and said, "Look, I'm an alcoholic. I know what it's like." He says if he was still using, he'd probably still be alive because he wouldn't be depressed. It's mm -hmm. when you go clean that you get depressed. Uh, never thought of it that way. Right. I don't know about you, but... Well, I, I find that to be depressing because you would think that when you were clean and not doing drugs that you'd be feeling better. It's uh, sort of a strange anomaly that it would put you in more of a risky position. Yeah, I don't know enough about it to comment on that end of it, but I do know that uh, it is a big loss for... You know, all of us. Uh, he just made us laugh, and he's the only. You know, I heard also that that, and and this is so true. He's the only guy. He's the only comic that could that really belonged on the same stage with Richard Pryor, who could who could hang with him. He's the only guy. Absolutely. A, I mean, Billy Crystal couldn't hang with him. None, none of these guys. Robin Williams could hang with R Richard Pryor, and they'd be they'd be even. Yeah. You know, would you agree with that? I absolutely agree with that. Yeah, and so it's a it's a shame we don't have either of them anymore. Yeah, and you know uh, they both battled drugs and alcohol. Uh, we know what happened to Richard Pryor uh, many many years ago, decades ago, mm -hmm. and uh, comedian. And then uh, there was a time that uh, that Robin Williams was depressed for a while. What happened to John Belushi uh, um, of Saturday Night Live? Right. So he was in that scene. He was in that. You know, he knew all the comics, they all knew him, he was so well known, yet Robin Williams seemed like such a normal guy. You could just walk up to him and talk to him. Ab absolutely. Absolutely. You know? So, well, let's move on. Let's talk a little bit about, um, you know, the Grizzlies, the baseball season uh, beginning to wind down now. And there are a couple of questions that need to be answered as far as the Fresno Grizzlies are concerned. Sure. And that's why our guest is here today to try to answer some of those questions. But I want to roll the videotape because we took some interesting shots of uh, Chuck Chansey Park uh, just, well, just days ago. It's an aerial shot. It's beautiful. we got a couple of questions to answer. And that is, well, the finances uh, certainly... Um, you know, they lost more than a million bucks last year. Where do we stand this year? Do they still owe the city a lot of money? Uh, the second is, will they remain an affiliate of the San Francisco Giants? And as we keep on this video here, I just love this scene. One of the, one of the finest and state-of-the-art minor league ballparks in the entire country. Chris, let's, let's tackle that first question first. The Grizzlies finances. You lost more than a million dollars last year. This year, I've been reading some stories where the team owes the city of Fresno as part of that uh, agreement, like 1.3 or 1.5. Where do we stand with all the finances? Ah, uh, goodness. Well, as of now, I believe the number is that we owe the city $1.3 million. Okay. I have a wire that's going to be coming in that will go to the city before the end of this week for a half a million dollars that will start to erode that and uh, I'm working with the city to come up with a portion of our annual naming rights payment that will also be applied to the outstanding balance and you know it's if you, if you ask about the finances of the team and the uh, relationship with the city and the amount owed with the city uh, it's probably uh, you could probably just rerun last year's tapes and it's about the same situation because last year around this time uh, we owed the city about the same amount of money uh, there were a number of uh, newspaper articles and reports saying gee is are the fresno grizzlies going to be here and we said of course we are and we are and right now we're in about the same position that we were in last year are we going to be here next year we are there's no doubt about it is AAA baseball going to be here next year? Absolutely. It's a guarantee. There's no way that it won't be. Uh, do I wish the finances were better? Yes, I do. 
but we have a very difficult lease still, and we have a very difficult food service contract, and both of those are having a fairly significant impact on us. I will say that our corporate partnership revenue is up. Our season ticket revenue is up. Our food service revenue is up. Uh, we're a little bit lower this year on our day of game ticket sales, uh, but we have some of our big days coming up toward the end of the season. Uh, and we're going to be here for the next, I think it's 26 years left on our lease with the city. Is somewhere that what it is? Somewhere, somewhere around 25, some, 26 around years? Around. Yeah. 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 yeah, so so you said let, let's break this down now. Now you said sure. it's about the same as last year, and you know these figures have been widely publicized. We're not breaking any ground here on Connect with Me. I'm sure you've read about this in the Fresno Bee and everywhere mm -hmm. else. So it's no top secret. Um, so why is the lease a difficult one for the Fresno Grizzlies at this point? Well, you know, I love Fresno, and Fresno's been my home for the last 10 years, and Fresno will continue to be my home going into the future as far as I can see. But Fresno, demographically, has some challenges. And while we have roughly a million people in the metropolitan area, the number of people at or below the poverty line is significant. So yeah. while we have a fairly significant population, which is far higher than is required for, uh, to support a AAA team, we're actually, as a community, we're number 30 in the, in the league as far as uh, economic uh, position of, the cons of, our, of our population goes. So it, it, it puts us in a position where, with a million people, half of the people probably don't have enough money to come to a game. Maybe and have never been to a game. Absolutely. And although we're trying to uh, attract these people to go to a game, and we have specials during the week that are such that uh, it wouldn't be an economic hardship to come to a game, uh, it's difficult to reach out to these people. But we're working with the uh, Fresno Housing Authority, and we're trying to reach out to some of their constituents to see if we can bring them to a game at our cost uh, just to show them what baseball is and how much fun it can be, and then we're going to tell them tell them what the opportunities are for them to come to a game without spending tons of dollars. Right. So. Okay. Uh, we are talking with Chris Cummings. Uh, time to take a break here. A commercial timeout on Connect with Me. You can call in at four three six Me TV Option Eleven. Do call in. We had a lot of phone calls yesterday. We had thirty five plus calls during the hour. So if you have a question, a comment, either about Robin Williams or even about uh, uh, Chris and his Fresno Grizzlies, we're proud that uh, they're going to be here for the next 25 or 26 years. Call in, and we'll talk to you back in just a moment. When you like Ventura TV Appliance on Facebook, it's nice. But when you love the Whirlpool appliances we deliver, it's even better. Our website is cool, and it's a good place to start, but you really should touch the merchandise before you buy. Touch the new Whirlpool Ice Collection. It offers a modern style made to create an inspiring kitchen experience. Save big on this Whirlpool Black Ice or White Ice Kitchen. Come in to Ventura TV Appliance and touch the merchandise today. You know, the big question I have for Chris, and we're going to continue our conversation with baseball, you know, our director over there, Ara, he's like a soccer nut, okay? He likes soccer better than baseball, football, basketball combined. So why is it that Grizzly Stadium sells out for soccer and we can't, we can't even, I mean, I'm a baseball nut. I have been since I was like five years old. I, I don't know. I, I'm not a soccer guy. Never have been. It's probably it has something to do with my age. I never grew up with soccer. Mm -hmm. So why is it we can't fill that thing up for baseball? That's what I want to see. Well, well, first, uh, let me correct you. Grizzly Stadium has been out for about Chick six Chancy, years by the now. <laughs> Chick Chancy yeah. Park, and we love our friends at Chick Chancy. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Sorry about that. I call it Grizzly, too, but it's Chick Chancy Park. Chick Chancy Park. <laughs> let me get that clear from my friends up at Chick Chancy. It's Chick Chancy Park. <laughs> You know, it's the the soccer matches are an interesting thing, and we we sort of run uh, this this year. We had a couple of MLS teams come down and yeah. play 
uh, and we had a and the Fuego played against some of their subs and the two MLS teams played and it was it was just a great event and I think part of it was the impact of the World Cup because people were people were excited to see soccer and they yeah. there was a lot of hype for the World Cup so I think that sort of uh, strengthened the audience that we had for the MLS game and then we we have a promoter who each year brings in a couple of the uh, uh, dominant uh, Mexican League teams and these these things are like treats so my my bet is that if we had 20 of them or 30 of them or 72 of them a year that the the attendance would sort of squeeze down and you'd start getting the the soccer fans it would dwindle you think i think it yeah. would i think it would dwindle a little bit yeah okay call coming in good morning you're on the air caller i was just conversing with my friend pete we were talking about the stadium and the successes the stadium has had thus far and we were comparing notes and he he mentioned that soccer again we're getting back to soccer mm -hmm. soccer is an international draw a baseball national locally mm, i don't know but i do want to commend your guest for making an effort for sticking in there for for looking at the big picture not looking at short term term losses but looking at long term potentials mm -hmm. stick with it man because that's what it's going to take uh, to make it in this town make it in this community stick to itiveness uh, i commend you and the only other question i had of course is are we going to see some of that mls soccer that <laughs> that uh, the, the director was talking about? Thank well, we, we've, with the success of the MLS game that we had earlier this year, we have tried to work a multi-year agreement with those teams to uh, have them come and play. The problem is that they can't enter into multi-year uh, agreements or contracts until they see what their schedule is going to be. We have been told that both teams want to come back and both teams would appreciate playing in Fresno. They loved it here. They loved the crowd. They loved the excitement. Uh, they had a great time. They had a fun game. Uh, and for them, it was a, a beautiful preseason experience. So we're hopeful that we're going to get one or two of those again next year. And then our, our, our friend uh, uh, who does the uh, Mexican uh, games is already talking to us about one or two games for next year so we'll we'll have probably between two and four big time soccer games next year does this help the grizzlies in a way the drawing all these big soccer crowds it does it it, it helps it helps the grizzlies and it also helps the city because each ticket that's sold creates a dollar of revenue that goes to the city in, f in the form of, a, of an AIDS fee or a facility fee. Uh, and it helps me because uh, whereas in the past, uh, I not only had to confront losses with the Grizzlies, I had to confront losses with the Fuego. And now we have the formula shifted with the Fuego so the Fuego are, are uh, no longer experiencing red ink. So the Fuego. So let, let, I, explain this to me so I can understand it in my own mind. So, mm -hmm. d do the Grizzlies get a cut from these soccer games a little bit? Do they get a? Well, we we did from the MLS game and okay. from the uh, the Mexican games. Uh, we don't get a cut on ticket revenue, but we get a percentage on food service and a percentage on gotcha. on parking. Okay. But even even those percentages for us, I think on the. Uh, uh, the uh, Mexican League teams. I think we have thirty thousand dollars of revenue that we that we received for that. And I'll tell you, I've never seen a thirty thousand dollar chunk of revenue that I haven't been in love with. Hey, it's thirty thousand more than you had. Absolutely, right? that's what Absolutely. you got to look at. Everything and, helps. And do, do, do you get a cut from the Fuego too? Uh, how does that work? Well, the, we we own the Fuego. You own the Fuego, so you get it. So that's part and, of the. And a actually, the. Uh, Fresno Baseball Club, which owns the Grizzlies, has a 51% ownership position in the Fuego. Then my brother has about a 30% position, and then we have some uh, local partners who have the rest of it. But I'm just wondering, they're separate entities. They're separate entities. But there is some crossover. Absolutely, yes. Okay, so that's how that works. So you were talking about the difficult lease before we went to break, and mm -hmm. talk about the difficulty you mentioned 
Uh, well, no, you mentioned the Fresno Housing uh, Authority and how you're trying to get people to the game. How is Correct. that? How, do you, how are you working with them? In what way? Can you explain how you're trying to get people there through the Fresno Housing Authority? Well, we this started off with uh, a conversation with Preston Prince, who, who runs the Fresno Housing Authority. And he, he was asking about any way that we could think of where some of the people who are in his programs could enjoy baseball. And my comment back to him was that they were a portion of the market that we, that we just weren't attracting. And I agreed to but basically provide tickets for a game for the constituents in his programs. I and see. our goal was to have these folks come to a baseball game see how how nice it is see how reasonable the prices can be and then have them come back on their own the whole purpose is to expose them to the game absolutely yes and the stadium and the environment and maybe they'll come back if they can afford it that's that's true and again on tuesdays and wednesdays and mondays we have our ticket pricing and the the perks that come along with the tickets such that it's, it is affordable for people who don't have a lot of disposable income. Yeah, I want to talk about that uh, in just a few minutes because you've got a promotion going on tonight that's interesting, but uh, <laughs> to say the least. So, so the difficulty in the food service program is what? Uh, we have a contract that favors our food service provider more than it favors us. Oh, can you can you fix that? Uh, we can, can we do anything to help you fix that? <laughs> <laughs> well, time will time will be the cure for it because there are two years left in the contract. I see. So once we get through the next uh, next two years, so two more years, and then you can renegotiate years. with either them or someone else. Absolutely. Yeah, and and so you it, you know you. <laughs> You've got to get better attorneys or something. You've got to get something that's going to favor you. <laughs> well, the, 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 thing, the thing is, this was a 13-year contract oh my with God. essentially no, no, cut, no, uh, no cut provision in it. So right. for us, we came in eight years ago. Yeah, you so came into it. We came into it, and yeah. we, we knew it wasn't great. But as I learned more and more about baseball, I learned how unfavorable it is to us so and especially a minor league franchise exactly so you know. we're, we're looking forward to having that renegotiated yeah and you said game sales are up this year a little bit season ticket sales really up from what to what i, I don't i don't have the oh, numbers you don't have the numbers this, so, okay but we're, right. we're, we're, up, we're up in but in you 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 drew over an average of about four thousand last year I don't know what you're doing this year. It's roughly probably about the same. Yeah, it's probably somewhere about in the that, same. Somewhere in that range. Um, I do want to talk, because you, you mentioned the promotion nights. Monday, mm -hmm. Tuesday, and Wednesday, is it? Well, we, we have promotions pretty much every day of the week. But for, for families, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesdays are the better, are the better nights okay. for them. So tonight, you have a very interesting character coming to Chick Chansey Park. And I want to... I wanna <laughs> I want to show the videotape first because you're going to recognize this guy. His name is Jose Canseco. He was part of the Bash Brothers uh, back in the early, to well, actually mid to late uh, 80s, along with Mark McGuire on the Oakland A's. He wrote a book about steroids. He was on steroids, and then he kind of blew the lid uh, on this entire thing. Uh, Jose hitting a home run, as you see here in Game 1. It was a grand slam against the Dodgers. Game 1 of the World Series, 1988. He actually hit the top of the NBC camera out in center field. <laughs> what a monster of a shot. I think we're going to see the replay here. But Chris, Canseco is going to be in town tonight, right? Absolutely. To, do, to be doing what? Well, it's gonna, we're going to have a little mini home run derby. and So I can go out there tonight and well, I, I, th I think I think the the people who are going to be competing have already been. I think they were already selected. Selected. Right? So you and I can't get in the cage and say, "Hey, Jose." I well, can. I pr I probably yeah. could, <laughs> frankly, because uh, <laughs> the one who yeah, you pays, own the team. Yeah, the one who who's going to tell you not to. Yeah, who's going to tell you not to but get I'd, in the cage? I'd be I'd be afraid that I wouldn't be able to get the ball out of the <laughs> infield. So there's no chance that I'd be down there. Yeah, I'm afraid of that too. I went in the batting cage with my son the other day, and I. Man, I had a hard time getting the bat around the ball. It just was hard, and it's it was hard. only 75 miles an hour. So, so Canseco is in town. Canseco's in town. Uh, I wonder if he's going to be trimmed down. A trimmed down Jose Canseco. I saw him the other day. They had some kind of a reunion at the Coliseum, the '89 uh, World Series. We have a phone call coming in. Uh, good morning. You're on Connect with me with Chris Cummings. Your question, please. 
Yeah, uh, I'm a, a season ticket holder with the Grizzlies. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'm pretty happy, but with one exception. Okay. Why can't the Grizzlies get a decent radio station? Now, the one they have this year is a little better than last year, but there's places in Fresno you can't even get it. But I can get the Dodger game stronger than anything in town. That's coming from L.A. Well, let, let, me, let, me, let me try to address that. Uh, we don't have a lot of money, and you basically... We've, we have a great relationship with ESPN and with, uh, with, their, with their stations. Uh, Chris Pacheco over Chris there? Chris Pacheco yeah. uh, and John Oslin. And uh, they have a station that has a fairly strong signal, and it's one of the stronger signals in Fresno. Uh, now, if we want to go to a 50,000-watt super station, uh, I'm not quite sure how we could do that. Uh, it would cost a lot more money. It would cost a lot more money. And again, uh, we think that we have a, a, the best radio partner that we can possibly have. And frankly, while I agree with you that last year we had some, uh, some pretty big gaps in coverage, I haven't heard anybody else talking about large gaps in coverage. But I will say thank you very much for listening to us on the radio. But as a season ticket holder, you should be at the ballpark, and you shouldn't have to be I dealing with the radio. I like to listen to the game at the ballpark. Okay. I watch it, and I listen to it so I know yeah. what's going on. Yeah. No, I, I agree with you. I mean, I go to AT&T, and I listen to the game while the game is on in front of me. I mean, I can hear John Miller and this and that. But So what radio station is it? Uh, just just mention the station. I know Doug Greenwald, he's been a guest here a couple of times. Uh, he's a great play-by-play -play guy. So what, what radio station can we get the Grizzlies on? Um, help me? Yeah. Okay. Call, are you still there? Oh, you Gone. Okay. Um, we're going to talk more about this and where you can listen to the Grizzlies on radio because they've got a great play-by-play -play announcer. Doug Greenwald, he's the son of Hank Greenwald, who did the San Francisco Giants for years. I grew up uh, listening to him, and he did the Yankee games, and it's all in the family here with the Fresno Grizzlies. So we're back with our guest, 436 Me TV, Option 11. Got a comment about the Grizzlies or even about the passing of Robin Williams. We're back in a moment. Don't you ever hit me again! We got a hit on our MeTV Fresno now on Comcast Channel 187. When you like Ventura TV appliance on Facebook, it's nice. But when you love the Frigidaire Gallery appliances we deliver, it's even better. Our website is cool, and it's a good place to start, but you really should touch the merchandise before you buy. Time for that upgrade to an Energy Star qualified French Door Frigidaire Gallery Refrigerator. Quality appliances for the way you live. Get the best selection, price, and service in town without waiting. Come in to Ventura TV Appliance and touch the merchandise. All right, viewers, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe uh, ESPN Radio is 940. I think that's where the uh, Fresno State Bulldog games can be heard with Paul Leffler, mm -hmm. uh, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, I should know this. Why don't I know this? But then that's where you can hear the Grizzlies games uh, as well. But I want to get back to the promotion. What's that now? 92.9. 92.9? Does that sound? I don't, know if that's, I don't know if that's correct. I thought it was 940. I don't know. I don't know. I think it's 940, to be honest with you. But you know what? If, you, if, if anybody is out there listening, and you know what station the Grizzlies are on for crying out loud, call in. <laughs> anyway, I want to get back to the promotion 
of Jose Canseco. Let's roll that videotape again. I love watching Canseco play. We all know he was on steroids. He wrote a book about it, testified before Congress, uh, has since um, apologized for writing the book. I have no idea why he exposed it. Look at that ball hit that camera out there. That's pretty amazing. <laughs> but uh, so is this a financial setback a little bit to pay this guy to come here? I mean, he's not going to come here for free. I mean, a guy like Canseco, he's a big draw. Well, you you just told you just said the word. That's why, the, and that's the reason we have him coming in. He's a big draw. Yeah. So he's going to come in. People people like to watch home runs being hit. Uh, he is absolutely the epitome of strength as far as hitters go. Yeah. And people are going to get to see some balls that are hit a country mile. So it should be a lot of fun. Yeah, now, but how much is this going to set you back financially? I don't know if you can say, but I would imagine you're not paying this guy chicken fee to come here, right? Yeah, I can't remember what the total is. I think it's around $5,000. Okay, so but that's a big chunk of change for the Grizzlies. But if, I we, mean, ha if we have uh, 300, 300 more people in the ballpark, it's pretty much a wash. It pays for itself. So if yeah. we have a thousand extra people in the ballpark, then it's it's a financial success. So it, it doesn't it doesn't take a huge amount of increase. And and despite his admission to steroids and all of that, he's still very much a likable and popular figure in baseball. He he is, but you know he's he has had some issues in his life, and we certainly aren't condoning his lifestyle i frankly right. don't know enough about it to know to yeah, I, I don't, don't either. i don't know uh i know he's entertaining uh i know we're going to bring him in and everybody's going to have a good time and uh it should be it should be a lot of fun so if you don't have anything to do at 705 tonight you can come down to chick chancy park and watch a great great baseball game and now the game starts at 705 right and the home run derby starts at what time uh Probably before the game it's sometime. It's before the game. Before yes. the game. So get there around 6. Make sure. Yeah, 536. Make sure and don't miss it. Yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, Conseco doesn't come to town every day. and No, he doesn't. I hope he signs some autographs, too. I'm sure he will. He's a very gracious guy. and uh, I hope so. Yeah, I hope he does. Uh, he's still a likable figure, as I said, and very popular among baseball fans. I go to the A's games, and I still see Conseco jerseys in the, uh, in the stands. So, Absolutely. Um, you know, very popular guy. Did you uh, have any information about the radio station? Yes? No? Kino. Kino 1430. Kino 1430. Kino 1430. Does that sound that familiar? That sounds good. Okay. Well, it was either 940 or 1430. Uh, anyway, that's Kino. That's where you can hear the Grizzlies games and our friend Doug Greenwald, who does a terrific job. You think it's easy getting behind the microphone and calling a game? Do you know how much pre-game work there is, homework there is? It's, it's amazing. The no. work that you I've, have to do. I've had the good fortune of sitting next to Doug while he's doing the broadcast on, on hundreds of occasions. And he'll be sitting there just chatting with me with a microphone going. And he'll have his computer going, his uh, iPhone going. He'll be getting text messages. He'll be looking things up on his computer. He's got three or four books open. And he just keeps the conversation flowing so well, you don't think he's working at it. But <laughs> yeah. it's just an incredible thing to watch. Yeah, don't try that at home because don't it's not for it amateurs. <laughs> True. <laughs> All right, let's talk a little bit more about uh, your financial situation. And an article that appeared in the Fresno Bee, I just want to ask you if you get upset when you read stuff like this in the Fresno Bee because... It's, it's not very flattering. Uh, it was in April 2014 of this year, obviously. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know Lee Brand, don't you, the yes. city councilman? Okay, he said this about the Chick Chansey Park. I want to get the name right. It's Chick Chansey Park. He said, and I'm quoting him out of the Fresno Bee. I'm not quoting myself. This is Lee Brand talking. It was an empty promise that unfortunately just keeps delivering red ink. That, according to Lee Brand, quoted in the Fresno Bee, talking about the stadium, mm -hmm. I guess talking about the Grizzlies because of the you know financial situation. What do you think about when you read quotes like that? Does it make you think, hey, is the city for me or against me? Well, you know, I can't speak more positively about the patience that the city has had with me because it's it's I realize it's frustrating to deal with me because 
we don't have Wait, a I mean, cash you're flow. admitting it's frustrating to deal with you? It is. It is. <laughs> Why is that? Because we don't have the funds we don't have the funds right. available and the the city hates this as much as I do. Yeah. And the city is trying, you know, I talk with them about how we can fix this so that it won't end up being a thorn in our sides, but if you think the city likes to have this brought up every April and every uh, September when the naming rights payment comes in. They don't like it any more than I do, and we're all interested in having an ultimate resolution that's going to have this team operate without having bad press. But it's but this is almost like taking a swipe at the Grizzlies for crying no, out loud. No, it is. Kind it's of it's unnecessary, really. I mean, to no, say that. No, no, no. Uh, it's, it's not taking a swipe at so the it's Grizzlies. A bit, but he's, calling, it's, he's calling the Grizzlies. It's an empty promise. I well, mean. The, the ballpark. If you, if you look back at the, at the hype around the ballpark, and right. I, I know the, the ownership, the original ownership, uh, y you have to picture what happened in the world about the time this ballpark was being built. And if you look back to... 2002, by the way. Well, was, that's, yeah. that's when it opened. Yeah. But if you're looking back to when, when it was discussed and when it was approved, you're looking at 1998, 1999. And yeah. back then, there were no... The casinos weren't really there. So they weren't doing concerts. Uh, the Save Mart Center wasn't there. You know, the only competition in the, in the concert st uh, area was Selland Arena. Yeah. That was it. So back then, with only one venue available, it made sense to try to go and attack the concert market. And that's what the original ownership group did. Unfortunately, at the exact same time they were doing it, the Save Mart Center opened up, the casinos opened up, and now instead of having one venue for concerts, you have 12 venues for concerts. So the competition drove the price of the concerts up, and it basically squeezed Chick Chansey Park out of that market. It cost too much money for us to set up the ballpark for a concert when you can go to the Safe Mart Center, which has the infrastructure built into their structure, and just hang your soundboards and hang your lights, and you can set up in six or eight hours, do your concert, take it down in four hours. So for a concert, it's a 12-hour effort to go in do the concert and leave. When we did it, we did a Toby Keith concert several years ago, and it cost $260,000 to rent a stage and have it moved from Oregon to Fresno, set up and dismantled and moved back. It was 17 moving vans or trucks, 18 wheeler trucks. We can't compete on the concerts, on, on the concert end of it. That's, and that's that was, shocking. Wow. That was one of the that was one of the reasons for building a ballpark that was twelve thousand five hundred people to cater to the concerts. And if you look back, the concerts were originally programmed to provide about fifty percent of the revenue. And if you look at, at us, that that's the preponderance of our issue. We can't do concerts, special special events. We do we do a number of special events, but concerts are pretty much are pretty much out unless it's a fairly small and fairly intimate one. Yeah, I didn't realize it cost that much, and you have to ship something in from out of state. Well, we we ha we have a stage that's uh, that was uh, built when the when the ballpark was built, but the stage that Toby Keith demanded in his concert was so large that you could literally pick up our entire stage with all of the structure around it and put it in the middle of his stage and still have plenty of room. So it's it's tough. And you know, yeah. the performers have the have the ability to go wherever they want to go and they basically and demand. they basically yeah. demand pretty high fees. So it's if we're if we're competing against the Safe Mart Center, we can't compete. There's just no way to do it. Yeah, uh, Elton John was here not too long ago, wasn't he? Was he at the Safe Mart? I Elton believe John? so. Yeah, I, I mean, you couldn't have a con an Elton John type concert; it would cost too much. Is it what would, you're saying? It would be it would be out of the question to have something like that at the ballpark. Yeah, we're talking with Chris Cummings. He is the owner of the Fresno Grizzlies. Talking about finances, and we can talk about anything you want. We're back in just a moment. Ventura TV Appliance Center. We're the save energy, save time, save money place. The Energy Star qualified, ready, steam equipped, high efficiency Frigidaire Affinity Place. You heard right. Right now, save big on select Frigidaire laundry pairs and pay no interest when paid in full within six months. 
at the hometown low price think outside the big box place. Since 1951, Ventura TV Appliance Center, we're working hard to be your place. Hey, we're talking with Chris Cummings, and I guess we were talking uh, during the break about an MLS team. Let's talk about that a little bit, because I didn't know um, uh, the information that you had just uh, uh, just told us here uh, during the break. Can't have an L MLS team move to Fresno and play at Chick Chansey because... You can't fit a regulation size field into the ballpark. Wow. So you, you well, without without significant modifications to the ballpark. And thousands of dollars in renovation. Hundreds of thousands. Maybe millions. Or millions maybe a couple of, of millions. Dollars worth, yeah. of, worth, of, uh, worth of expense. Wow. And for an MLS, for an MLS franchise, you need to have seating basically on all four sides. And we, we would be able to cover two and a half sides, but you'd have to put more seating in. And 12,500 people is big for a AAA team, but it would be way too small for an MLS team. It would just be a huge financial commitment. What do MLS teams usually draw? I don't even know because I don't follow soccer. So is it is it 20,000 or more? Some, some, some of the more popular teams will have 20,000 or more people at the games. Wow, that's amazing. And, okay, let's just hypothetical, if an MLS team ever did come in here, would it help your cause? I don't know. I don't know. It would it would be it would be a struggle for our grounds crew to uh, retrofit back and forth between baseball and soccer. Yeah. And I, I don't know if you if you if I don't know who in Fresno recognized what happened around the Fourth of July, but we had a soccer game in the evening on the third of July, and to have that game, we basically had to carve out the infield, take out the pitcher's mound, and take out the warm up mounds, remove them sod the field, play the soccer game, and then overnight our grounds crew and many, many, many helpers removed all that sod, got it off the field, rebuilt the mound from scratch, and it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a feat to have that done in a matter of a week. To have that done in about a 12-hour period was just a, a miracle. Uh, and we managed to retrofit that field, and I don't think very many people on the 4th of July recognize that 12 hours or 24 hours before, it was a soccer, a soccer field. field with a, with a sod, sod throughout. Yeah, and the mound's got to be exactly a certain height. Absolutely. Uh, it has to be exactly 60 feet 6 inches from home plate. True. The, ma the, the rubber. Correct. Um, so those measurements have to be exact. You can't just go back there and just put a bunch of dirt <laughs> on the mound and say, oh, there it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there. Yeah. And, th and they know the difference. So yeah, yeah. You well, you got some experienced it. people out there working at Chick Chansey. Uh, no question, they do a great job. But uh, so, so before I move on, so you, you owe about the same as last year, about $1.3 million, but shortly you're going to be wiring about 500000 to the city. Correct. Let me ask you, what is your relationship with the city of Fresno? Uh, meaning, what's your relationship with council members, the mayor, they all recognize? And this council, this mayor, they were not, I mean, it goes without saying, they weren't in office when uh, all this came to pass. The building of the stadium, uh, the move of the Grizzlies here, the ownership. The question is, what's your relationship with them now? Well, I, I think my relationship with them is, is as good as it can possibly be, given the circumstances. But no, It's not strained, then? No, and I, I, I know most of, the, most of the city council members, and I, I, a few of them are friends, but mm -hmm. you know, it's a difficult position for the city because they have the bonds to pay on the, on the ballpark, and it's a difficult right. position for us because we have to basically come out of pocket for the for the payments that we make. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, the city could have been a lot, be, and they could be a lot more difficult for me to get along with and work with, but they, they understand the challenges. And again, they have, they have worked with me to try to help figure out ways of, of uh, mitigating our problems. Now, I was reading somewhere where, and you correct me if I'm wrong here, I don't know if you can help me out on this, um, I was reading that if you draw just 300 people more a game, that that'll help cover your costs for the lease? Is that true, or is that kind of a false it's, number? It's, it's closer, it's, there, is, there is a number that will generate 
the the revenue that we would need to get into black ink it's more than 300 it's okay. probably about six somewhere between six and seven hundred okay but it's not like two thousand more people per right. game and right. a lot of our games our, our attendance is is fine the areas where we wish we could have a little bit more help are mondays tuesdays and wednesdays which are which are have the weakest audiences Thursday, yeah. Thursdays through Sundays, we have very few issues, and we, we draw right. very, very well. Mm -hmm. Now, r you've had all these promotions dating back, I don't know how long, but last year you had Bobby Richardson in here. If you don't know who he is, he played second base for the New York Yankees. I believe he's a Hall of Fame player, as a matter of fact. He was in here signing autographs. And then about a week and a half ago, you <laughs> I want to put his picture up on the screen. Let's put up that still photo of Bill Buckner. <laughs> Bill Buckner, uh, infamous, I should say, Boston Red Sox player, the former Red Sox player, who in Game 6 of the World Series committed one of the most heinous errors in Red Sox <laughs> history when Mookie Wilson came up in the, what was it, the bottom of the ninth inning, I believe it was, and a ball he should have caught. Let's play the videotape and let's hear the sound on it. No sound? No, what, so what happened there? Okay. Um, well, uh, you want to turn that down? Yeah, no problem. Um, Mookie Wilson, of course, uh, hitting that ball in Game 6 of the World Series through the legs of, of Bill Buckner right there, the umpire getting out of the way. It's one of the most famous plays in World Series history. It put Bill Buckner on the blacklist as far as Boston and Beantown was concerned. That scored Ray Knight with a game-winning run. And, of course, the next night was Game 7. The Mets went on to win the World Series. And, basically, Buckner was banned from the city of Boston for a long time. I mean, not, not literally, but I'm, just, I'm saying that as a, kind of a joke. But he was here a week and a half ago. How, how do these promotions of getting, like, Conseco and Buckner in here, how does that help the team? It, through incremental ticket sales. Okay. And, again, uh, some, sometimes we win big with these people, and sometimes they don't produce as much as we, as we would hope to produce. Right. Um, but, overall, we might pick up 1,000 or 1,500 extra people, and typically... We spend somewhere between five and ten thousand dollars for these people to come in. So for us, it's a, it's an investment in in generating revenue, and it's uh, I'd do it seventy two times a year if it was going to work seventy two times a year. Okay, let me ask you a legitimate question, and that is, okay, you brought in Conseco, you're bringing him in tonight. He's going to be there at Chickasaw Park, by the way. Get there about six o'clock. You can see that home run hitting contest. I will guarantee you he'll probably be signing autographs, knowing Conseco. <laughs> he loves the crowds. He loves the fans. Uh, now you brought in Bill Buckner a week and a half ago. I've heard people come up to me and say this because I, I love talking baseball. Mm -hmm. And I, this isn't my question, but questions I've had posed to me by friends. Okay, the Grizzlies are affiliated with the Giants. Why don't you bring in some former Giants? Why don't you bring in Willie Mays, Juan Marichal, Willie McCovey. Willie McCovey is one of my fa all-time yeah. favorites. Um, there have got to be some others around, like Cepeda. Oh, yeah. Um, we've, we've, you, we've brought all of those folks in. But not recently. Well, you know, again, we're, we're looking... Are they hard to get over there, or what? Are they, are they hard to bring over? Or? Well, w Willie Mays, Willie McCovey, m some of those folks are, are getting... They're not quite as young as they used to be. And oh, they yeah. are. They are a Close little to bit, 80 years old. Right. They are a little bit of a challenge to, to attract. Because like Willie McCovey's in a wheelchair, I, I understand, uh, uh, most of the time. Most of the time, or some, yeah. at least or some, some, of, some, of, the some time. of the time yeah. he is. Yeah. Poor guy. But, you know, the, uh, you, you look at these athletes, and these folks all went through their careers really training and working, and a lot of them are not as mobile as they'd like to be, and they don't want to go out as often as they used to go out. Uh, we've brought in... All of the old uh, San Francisco players, and you know, eventually. I wish you could get them in, though, in the future. Like, you know, I know it's hard, um, but yeah, you know, I'd love to see Mays and McCovey here together. Wouldn't that be a great 
promotion night. It'd probably be, I mean, it'd, it would be sold out for weeks if you promoted the darn thing. <laughs> well, I'd, 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 like to, I'd like to have you and, and me TV and Ventura TV <laughs> help sponsor it, and that we'd be happy to do it. God, God, we'd, we'd, I don't know. We'd have to talk to the boss about that. Maybe that's a possibility. We'd get a, we'd get a share of the cut, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, you can try that. <laughs> we'd give you a lot of publicity, though. I'll tell you what, though. That, that would be... Uh, a, a game for the ages if you brought those two in, and even Marischal. Uh, right. Cepeda, I don't know if Cepeda's around. I'm not sure. He, uh, he, he can be. I think he, mo most of these folks are have, a, have an ongoing relationship, an, an emeritus-type relationship with the Giants. So they, they're agree, they agree to go to a certain number Here's of Here's another Giants guy games. I just thought of. Off the top of my head, before I forget, I mean mm -hmm. to interrupt you. Um, um, former Giant Joe Morgan. Joe Morgan. I Will mean, he Clark. lives in the Bay Area. Yeah, yeah. Will Clark. Will Clark. Um, uh, I love Joe Morgan. Love watching him play for years. And and, and again, we've had, uh, except for Joe Morgan, I'm not sure if we've had him, but we've had virtually everybody else here within the last five or six years, and we will we will circulate around and get them again. But we have to uh, when we bring these folks in. It's not really, they're not really being brought in for our traditional baseball fan. They're being brought in to yeah. bring an incremental person in. Yeah, I'll, brought, I'll bet if you brought Mays and McCovey here, we wouldn't be able to get close to them. They'd be such a huge crowd. They'd be <laughs> stacked up from here to the ballpark, Ventura TV to the ballpark. Um, we only got about three minutes left, but I do want to ask you, what's your affiliation now with the Giants? I'm hearing these rumors came out of the San Francisco Chronicle earlier this year that you're going to flop. The A's are going to take over the affiliation for the Giants. The Grizzlies are going to be with the Milwaukee Brewers. And I know that none of this can be, can be resolved until the end of the season because you're talking about tampering. You can't mm -hmm. tamper. But is any of this true that you're <laughs> going to lose your affiliation with the Giants and the 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 Sacramento River Cats are going to take over. The, there's you know there there's a specific procedure that's set up between Major League Baseball and Minor League Baseball, and Major League teams and their minor league affiliates have until roughly the middle of September to sign to re up their agreements. And your agreement is up, right? It it, end, it ends at the end of this year. Yeah. But if you look at just look at the Giants and. Can you imagine that they may have a few other things that they're working on right now, such that whether their affiliation or their PDC with us is signed might not be at the top of their, their, their list? They're, I think, right now a half game out of the wild card slot. Yeah, and they're four and a half behind the Dodgers. Four and a half or five. And yeah, five right, now. Right now, five, yeah. right now, their effort is to get to the postseason and to win games. Uh, I've had a number of conversations with the Giants, and uh, our contact person there says that they haven't even had an internal discussion. And the last time I talked with them, they hadn't re-upped their PDCs with any of their affiliates, even San Jose, which they own, yeah. or their majority owner, if they don't own the whole but thing. But do you have any reason in the back of your mind that they wouldn't re-up with you? There's no reason to believe that they would. There's no reason reason to believe that they wouldn't. It's just something in, if uh, if we get to September 15th or September 20th, and we don't we don't have a contract signed with them, we would then enter in uh, something that's the equivalent of free agency, where we'd be told who else wasn't signed with anybody, and then we'd sit down and talk with them and. Frankly, I don't know if that's going to happen, but if you notice Well, you're the not colors, at that point yet. You're right. It's, it's, still, it's still five or six weeks away, but yeah. uh, I am a Giants fan, always have been, always will be. The uh, advantage they have up in Sacramento, they have more Giants fans, I think, because they're closer to the Bay Area. It seems like there are too many Dodger fans here in the Central Valley. Anyway, um, <laughs> that's but a if, joke. But if <laughs> on the contrary, if you look at it, there are... Thousands of Fresno folks who make the trek up to San Francisco each year to go to games. Me, one of them. Me too. And <laughs> they they love us. They can they can take people from Sacramento a little bit more for granted. Yeah, out of time. Would you come back? Absolutely. I'd love to have you and back anytime. You're, you know, you're welcome here anytime. Chris. Any anytime. Just give me a buzz. And we're willing to help you out as best we can here. At Connect with me. We're. Um, and, well, I'll, I'll send over a contract for Mays and McCovey <laughs> so that we can, uh, we can work on Mays that. I want Mays and McCovey here, my two childhood heroes. 
back with another edition of Connect With Me. Tomorrow here, we're going to be talking about uh, Tony Stewart and the accident that took place uh, over the weekend in upstate New York. Have a great day. See you tomorrow.